Did you know that the current rate of plastic production in the world is more than 300 million tons per year? On the other hand, it takes decades for the plastics to degrade in nature. So these alien materials are being piled up more and more in the environment. In addition to their visible pollution around us, over time they also erode into microplastic pieces with a size of less than 5 mm that can propagate into waters, foods, and even our bodies. One potential path to tackle plastic pollution could be biodegradation, in which we literally hire microorganisms to disintegrate and absorb the plastic for us. Not all the bacterial species around us have this capability though. Some members of the genus Sodomonas have been shown to be plastic degraders that are being used for this purpose. They are funny. Anyway, let's move on. They somehow break the bonds of the plastic polymer chains outside of their cells. And when the plastics turn into more manageable pieces, they kind of transfer them into their single cell bodies where they can enjoy them as their food. However, there is a problem with these exciting creatures. Currently, their performance is so weak that it may take decades to disintegrate a small chunk of plastic. Also, whenever they can, they prefer to consume other more available food sources such as glucose rather than messing with a hard polymer chain as a small piece of snack. Another part of the challenge is that the plastics around us are not of the same composition. They are different in chemical formulation, molecular weight, surface properties, and so on. For example, polyethylene is the most widely used plastic to make plastic bags, water and milk bottles, and toys. Polystyrene serves as an effective thermal insulation in disposable cups, packaging materials, and laboratory equipment. And polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, is commonly found in shower curtains, raincoats, and garden hoses. Because of this diversity, the biodegradation performance can be highly different from one type to another type of plastic. For example, polyethylene is much easier to biodegrade compared with polyvinyl chloride. Okay, now let's get into more details of the plastic biodegradation by bacteria and see how it actually works. Bacteria and microplastic particles are initially submerged in a growth medium. As the first step in a successful biodegradation process, the bacteria should be able to access the surface of the microplastics and attach to them. If they cannot attach, they cannot eat. When the bacterial cells come within a few micrometers of the plastic surface, they can attach only if there are no dominant interfacial repulsive forces between the cells and the surface of the plastic. Depending on the chemical composition of the plastic, bacterial surface and the liquid medium between them, the interfacial forces could be different. Because most plastics such as polyethylene are highly hydrophobic, only bacteria with hydrophobic surfaces can easily attach to them. A hydrophobic surface hates water and tends to remove water molecules from itself because its surface energy is low. That's why, if you dispense a water droplet on a hydrophobic surface, the droplet would look like a sphere with a contact angle of higher than 90 degrees. So, when a hydrophobic bacterial cell approaches a hydrophobic plastic surface, the water molecules between them can simply drain out and the liquid surface tension pushes the bacterial cells toward the plastic surface. 
This is called a hydrophobic attraction in which no interfacial attractive forces are involved in the attachment. On the other hand, a hydrophilic surface tends to keep the water molecules stuck to it. That's why a water droplet on a hydrophilic surface spreads over it. Most of the bacterial cells have hydrophilic surfaces, so their access to the surface of the plastic is not easy. This is partly because the cells tend to keep the water molecules around them, and the hydrophobic plastic surface has no tendency to grab them. To improve bacterial attachment, usually the microplastic surfaces are pre-treated by various oxidizing methods, such as exposure to ultraviolet radiation. The pre-treatment step increases the surface roughness of the plastic. It creates functional groups such as hydroxyl and carbonyl groups that help in better attachment of the bacteria. When the plastic surface is highly active, it's going to be sticky and the bacterial cells can better attach to it. Once the bacteria attach to the surface, they need to provide a favorable environment for themselves to start degrading the plastic. And that favorable environment is called a biofilm, a colony of bacterial cells on the surface of the plastic. Biofilm former bacteria utilize the nutrients in the growth medium and increase their population at the surface of the plastic. In the absence of other carbon sources, the bacteria would mainly rely on the plastic to survive. Each cell grows in length until it reaches a maximum size when it is split into two daughter cells. Along with the dulling process, bacteria secrete extracellular polymeric substances that consolidate the colony on the plastic surface. Okay, now the bacteria are ready to eat the plastic. Let's see how they do it. Because the plastic molecules are long polymer chains, they are too big for the bacteria to pass them through their plasma membrane. Therefore, they employ some extracellular enzymes to break down the polymer chain into more manageable pieces. The microenvironment inside the biofilm helps these enzymes better spread and access the polymer surface and attack it. In a proposed pathway for polyethylene biodegradation, the large polyethylene molecule is initially oxidized and dehydrogenized which is partly mediated by enzymes such as alkane hydroxylases and oxidases. Next, further carbon-carbon bond breakage results in formation of acetic acid mediated by esterase enzymes. The acetic acid can be transported into the bacterial cell to feed in the bacterial metabolic pathways including the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the TCA cycle to release the energy of chemical bonds, generate carbon dioxide, and contribute to the biosynthesis of essential compounds in the cell. You know, the plastic biodegradation process does not always end up with valuable products for the bacteria. Sometimes, Degrading the plastic molecules create some byproducts that could be even toxic for the bacteria. And this limits their growth on the plastic surface. One interesting way to resolve this issue is to co-culture another bacterial species capable of absorbing those toxic substances along with the plastic degraded bacteria. Therefore, the plastic degraded bacteria enjoy the carbon source obtained from the degraded plastic and the symbiotic bacteria keep absorbing the toxic substances as their food source. Okay, although biodegradation could be a quite tempting and ideal solution for the plastic crisis, it is still in its infancy. There is a long way to go to be able to use it in practice by engineering some microorganism that can do a better job for us. <laughs> Although I'm not really sure that introducing new microorganisms to the environment cannot mess up nature more, 
anyway let's hope for the better please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share and subscribe to our channel also drop your comments below about this video and ideas for the future video we love to hear from you thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video